Welcome to the Jesuit Institute. A few weeks ago, we asked you to give us feedback on the weekly broadcast mass. Thank you for that. After going through it all together, we have now decided that we will continue to offer you an online Sunday Mass. Many of those who responded explained how they were excluded before the COVID pandemic. We do not want you to be excluded again. If you are mobile and able, we encourage you to go back to your parish. I also made an appeal to you for support and donations. Thank you to the many people who responded generously. If you would still like to support us, perhaps with your time and talents or financially, please do not hesitate to contact us. The email address will appear on the screen now. You can make any financial contributions you want to online. There are also QR codes on the screen. Thank you once again for your ongoing support. May God bless you. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come before the Lord, knowing that at times we judge and condemn unjustly. For the times we have done that to others, let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, that we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might de declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. When the Lord brought back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongues, Songs of Joy. What, what great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Then the nations themselves said, 
What great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. What, what great, great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. What, what great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as refuse, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that, if possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Even now, says the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came to the temple, and all the people came to him as he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisee brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin not again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just this last week I was peeling an onion. And for some reason I was actually paying attention to what I was doing. And as you peel away these different layers, you notice a couple of things. First of all, how the texture begins to change and the color of these different layers 
begins to change. We have those thin, rough, outer parts of the onion, but as you go in, every layer has a slightly different color. And as you peel, you also have a slightly different reaction, because the more you peel, the more tears flow from your eyes. And I wonder if Lent is not a bit like peeling an onion, inviting us to peel away at the different layers of our lives. Right at the beginning of Lent, on Ash Wednesday, we spoke about almsgiving and prayer and fasting. And these were always all tools that we are given to peel away at what is going on inside of us. And we know that each human being is very complicated, that there are layers upon layers upon layers in our hearts. At face value, the story that we hear in the gospel today is one of this woman who is committing adultery. But I think when you start to peel away at this story, when you look at the different layers, you suddenly notice that maybe that is really the secondary part of the story. Notice three things. The first is the treatment of that woman. Absolutely no personhood. Absolutely no humanity. There is absolutely no compassion for her. And suddenly you notice that the Pharisees and the scribes are acting like that because they are using her as bait. They are disguising it as upholding the law, but what they're really trying to do is get at Jesus. And she is simply the tool, the means to the end, the bait for them to trap Jesus. And so that's the second thing to notice, that they want to trap Jesus because they want to do away with Jesus. And notice why they want to do away with Jesus, because he did not approve of what they were doing and what they were saying and the burdens that they were laying on people. He challenged them. He showed up their religious hypocrisy. And so the easiest way to shut him up is to get rid of him. Notice another layer to the story. The bias and the structure of hypocrisy in the whole system. The sin of structural sin, so to speak, and that is patriarchy. They want to condemn and they want to kill this woman, murder her actually, under the guise of law because she has sinned. But notice the hypocrisy that the man is nowhere to be seen or heard. This woman was not alone. And so the system of patriarchy is another layer to the story. I think Lent is inviting us to look at the different layers in our own lives, the layers of sin in our own lives, to see the dynamic and how they play out, to see the dimensions of sin. But it's important because the message of Lent is not one of sin and condemnation, but rather the message of Lent is one in which we are invited to experience, as we heard last week, the compassion of God, that same compassion of God that this woman experiences in the very person of Jesus. Now, I was wondering how one might peel away these layers to understand ourselves better. And I wondered if Lent could be compared to the psychological tool, the Johari window which is a, a framework for understanding the conscious and the unconscious bias that can help us increase 
our self-awareness and our understanding of others. It was the creation of two psychologists in the last hundred years, Joseph Luft and Harrington Ingham. And the name Johari Window comes from combining their first names. You see, because some sin we are conscious of. For example, they were all conscious of what this woman had done. But there is other sin which often lurks beneath what we see and we are not conscious of that can be more detrimental because we are not aware. The Johari window is composed of four quad quadrants. And in the first quadrant, it's called the open uh, quadrant or the open window. And this represents the actions and the behavior in the, and the information that is known to the individual, to me, and also to those around me. In other words, it's what I know about myself and what other people know about me. It's public information. It includes perhaps facts and skills and the attitudes that I hold. The next quadrant is what they call blind, the blind quadrant, the blind spot. Information in this area is particularly useful for us to pay attention to. It's the actions and the behaviors that are known to others, but I am not aware of them. It can be perhaps the things that I do and other people perceive it in a certain way, and yet I don't realize how they are perceiving it. The third pain we call the hidden or the facade. And this information is the information about myself that I know that other people do not know. It's private information. It's the information that I choose to keep hidden. Maybe it can be ambition or dreams or opinions about a person or a group of people that I don't put out into the public domain. And then the fourth quadrant is what we call the unknown. This is the area that includes information and skills and behaviors that are unknown to me and also unknown to others. It sometimes can even include some subconscious information. Maybe there are childhood memories that are stored there that I have forgotten. Maybe there are undiscovered talents that I don't know that I have. Some people have the experience of discovering talents later on in their lives, things they were not aware of and other people were not aware of. Now, it seems to me that sin can work in the same way. There's that open quadrant. There's the things that I do that other people know and that I know that can cause offense. And then there is that blind area, things that I do that I'm not aware of but cause offense to others. And then there is that hidden area, things that I do which I know are wrong and I don't want other people to know about. And then finally, there's that unknown area, that place where I and others are not aware. I wonder if they realized in that story that they were acting out of a very patriarchal model. It's a challenging invitation to look at the dimensions and the dynamics of sin in our own lives, the depths and the layers of sin, the things where the ego is at work. And yet in Lent, we're invited to bring those to Jesus, because Jesus too is writing in the sand when we stand before him. And if we can come 
before him honestly, we too will hear those words, neither do I condemn you. Let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father oh, Almighty, Christ. Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord. For all Christians, that they may imitate the compassion of Christ in all their dealings with others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who make and enforce laws, that they may know how to temper mercy with justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For women and children. For all women and children whose personhood and humanity are stripped when they are used as bait, a means to an end, that they would come to know their dignity and to be cherished because they are the image of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have been unjustly treated or condemned, that the hurt and damage caused by injustice will be healed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For women who are abused, we pray for all women who have been abused physically, emotionally, and psychologically, that they would find healing and comfort. We pray for an end to gender-based violence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to patriarchy, that men and women would work together to end societal structures which oppress and harm women. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our own special needs. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring to you these our prayers, and we offer them through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruits of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. 
for the praise and glory of God's name. For our good and good of all God's holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Zion in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now in the words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. If you with others, feel free to show them a sign of peace. If not, just simply spend a moment praying for peace. And we pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. 
we pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.